Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of KubeCon here in Motor City, Michigan. My name is Savannah Peterson, and I'm delighted to be joined for this segment by my co-host, Lisa Martin. Lisa, how you hey. doing? Good, we are, we've had such great energy for three days, especially on a Friday. Yeah. That's challenging to do <laughs> for a tech conference. Go all week, push through the end of day Friday, but we're here, we're excited. We yeah. have a great conversation coming Absolutely. up. One of our alumni is back with us. Love we're it. We have a great conversation about learning. <laughs> There's been a lot of learning this week and I cannot wait to hear what these folks have to say. Please welcome Tom and Victoria from Cast and by Veeam. You guys are swagged up very well. You've got the fanny pack, you've got the vest. You even were nice enough to give me a Carhartt beanie. Carhartt being a Michigan company, we've had so much love for Detroit and, and locally sourced swag here. I've never seen that before. How has the week been for you? The week has been amazing, uh, as you can say by my voice probably. <laughs> uh, the so mic helps, don't worry, you're we, good. Uh, yeah, uh, so, so we've been talking to tons and tons of people, uh, obviously some vendors, partners of ours, that was great, uh, seeing all those people face to face again, because in the past years we haven't really been able to meet up with those people. But then of course also a lot of end users, uh, and most importantly, we've met a lot of people that wanted to learn Kubernetes, that came here to learn Kubernetes, and we've been able to help them, so feel very satisfied about that. When we were at VMware Explorer, Tom, you were on the program with us just, I guess that was a couple of months ago, I'm losing track, so many events yeah. are coming up. <laughs> Time you, is a loop, it's okay. It really is. You, you, you teased some new things coming mm -hmm. from a learning perspective. What is going on there? All right, so uh, I'm happy that you linked back to uh, VMware Explore there, but because yeah, I was so excited to talk about it, but I couldn't, and it was frustrating. I knew it was coming up, and was, it was going to be awesome. So um, just before KubeCon, uh, we launched uh, Cube Campus, which is the rebrand of uh, learning.cast.io, and Victoria is the great mind behind uh, all of this. Um, but what? The gist of it, and then I'll let uh, Victoria talk a little bit. The gist of Cube Campus is this all started as a small web page in our own domain to bring some hands on lab online and let people use them. But we saw so many people who were interested in those labs that we thought, okay, we have to make this its own community, and this should not be a branded community or a company branded community. This needs to be its own thing because people, they like to be in just a community environment without the brand from the company being there. So uh, we made it completely independent. It's a uh, Cube Campus, it's still 100% free, and it's still That's the right. only platform where you actually learn Kubernetes with hands-on labs. Um, we have 14 labs today. Uh, we've been creating one per month, and uh, we have a lot of people on there. The most exciting part uh, this week is that we had our first learning day, but we, before we go there, uh, I suggest we let Victoria talk a little bit about that user experience um, of Cube Campus. Oh, absolutely. Um, so Cube Campus is, a, as Tom mentioned, it's a one year old platform, and we rebranded it specifically to welcome more and you know embrace this uh, Kubernetes space. Uh, total, as one year anniversary, we have over 11,000 students and they've been taking labs, wow. over 7,000, yes, labs taken. And per each user, if you actually count approximation, it's over three labs, uh, 3.29, and I believe we're growing um, as per user, if you look at the numbers. Uh, so it's a huge success and it's very easy to use. Overall, if you look at this, it's a f number one free Kubernetes learning platform. So for your you, user journey, for your Kubernetes journey, if you start from scratch, don't be afraid. That's, we, we, got, we got it all, <laughs> we got you back. It's so important, and, and I'm sure most of our audience knows this, but the, the number one challenge, according to Gartner, according to everyone with Kubernetes, is the complexity, especially when you're getting harder. I think it's incredibly awesome that you've decided to do this. 11,000 students, I just want to settle on that. I mean, in your first year is really impressive. How did this become, and I'm sure this was a conversation you two probably had, how did this become a priority for Cast and Bybeam? Um, I have to go back for that to the last virtual only KubeCon, uh, where we were lucky enough mm. to have set up uh, a campaign. It was actually, 
we had an artist that was doing caricatures in a Zoom room and it gave us an opportunity to actually talk to people because the challenge back in the days was that everything virtual, it's very hard to talk to people. Every single conversation we had with people, asking them why are you at KubeCon virtual, mm -hmm. was to learn Kubernetes. Every single conversation. Yeah. And uh, so that, was, that is one data point. The other data point is um, we had one lab to, to use our software and that was extremely popular. So as a team we decided we should make more labs and not just about our product but also about Kubernetes. So that yeah. initial page that I talked about uh, that we built, uh, we had three labs at launch. One was to learn install Kubernetes one was to build a first application on Kubernetes, and then a third one uh, was to learn how to backup and restore your application. So there was still a little bit of promoting our technology in there, but pretty soon we decided, okay, this has to become even more, so we added storage, we added security, um, and, and a lot more labs. Uh, so today, 14 labs, uh, and we're still adding one every month. The next step for the labs is going to be to involve uh, other partners um, and have them bring their cool. technologies in the lab so that our user base can actually learn more about Kubernetes related technologies uh, and then hopefully with links to open source tools or free software tools and it's, it's going to continue to be um, a, uh, a learning experience for Kubernetes. I love how this seems to be have been born out of the pandemic in terms of the inability to, to yeah. connect with customers yes end users to really understand what their challenges are, how do we help you best, but you saw the exactly. demand mm -hmm. organically mm -hmm. and built this, and then in, in the first year, not only 11,000, as Victoria mentioned, 11,000 users, but you've almost quadrupled the number of labs that you have on the platform in such a short, short time period. Time. But you did hands-on lab here, which I know was a major success. Talk to us about that and what, what surprised you about yeah. the appetite to learn that's here. Yeah. So uh, actually I'm glad that you relate this back to the pandemic because yep. yes, it was That's all online because it was still the, the tail end of the pandemic. Um, but then for this event, we're like, okay, it's time to do this in person. This is the next step, right? So we organized our first uh, learning day uh, as a co-located event. We were hoping to get 60 people together in a room. Uh, we, we did two labs, a rookie and a pro. So we said two times 30 people, that's our goal because it's really, it's competitive here with the co-located events. It's difficult Lots to bring in people. Lots going on. <clears throat> and why don't, I, why don't I let Victoria talk about the success of that learning day because it was big part also her help for that. You know, uh, our main goal is uh, to meet expectations and actually see the challenges of our end user so we actually it also goes back to what we started doing research we saw the pain points and yes it's absolutely reflecting reflecting on how we deal with this and what we see and people very appreciative and they really love platform because it's not only prerequisites but also hands-on lab practice so and it's free again it's applied so, which is yes, great yes so we thought about the user experience user flow uh, also based you know the product when it's successful and you see the result and that's where we, can you say the number, so our expectation was 60 people? You're kind of, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I feel like the suspense is starting <laughs> to kill me. How many people came? <laughs> yeah. We had over 350 people in our room. Woo! Wow, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, Small disclaimer, we had a little bit of a technical issue in the beginning because of the success. There was a wireless problem in the hotel amongst yeah. others. Mm -hmm. Oh geez. So we were getting a little bit nervous because we were delayed 20 minutes. Nobody left. Yes. That, that's I, was standing, I was standing at the door oh. while people were solving the issues, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, now people are going to walk out, right. nobody left. Kind of gives and me goosebumps We, we, we had a little I reception know. afterwards, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. and I talked to people, sorry about the, the disruption that we had, and they were like, no, we, we are so happy that you're doing this. This was such a great experience. Um, Kasten also threw a party later this week, at the party, we had people come up to us like, I was at your learning day and this was so good, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I'm going to take the rest of the classes online now well and they, they love it, really. Yes, yeah, we, we had our instructors uh, um, leading the program as well, so if they had any questions, it was also addressed them immediately. Mm -hmm. So it was a, it was amazing event actually. I'm really grateful for people to come actually and appreciate it. <laughs> but now your best. boss knows how you can blow out metrics. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Victoria, good point, Lisa. 
a very I good point. I can tell. It, it's, it's actually, it's very tough to, for me personally, to analyze where the success came from because uh, first of all, the team did an amazing job at setting the whole thing up. Uh, there was food and drinks for everybody and it was really a very nice location in a hotel nearby. We made it a co-located event and we saw a lot of people register uh, through the KubeCon uh, registration website. But we've done co-located events before and you typically see a very high no-show rate and this was not very the case much. right now. They, a lot of, I mean, the, the no-show was actually very low. Obviously, we did our own campaign to our own database, right. but it's hard to say, like, we have a lot of people all over the world and how many people were actually going to be in Detroit. Yeah. One element that also helped, I'm actually very proud of that, um, uh, one of the people on our team, uh, Thomas Keenan, uh, he reached out to the local universities. Yes. Uh, and he invited students to come nice. to Learning Day as well. Um, I don't think it was very full with students. It was a good chunk of them, so there was a lot of people from here, but it was a good mix, and that way, I mean, we're giving back a little bit to the universities, we're students who yeah. need to learn. There's a lot of love for yeah. Detroit this week. I'm all about it. It's amazing, but, but from a STEM perspective, that's huge. Yes. Reaching down into that community and really exactly. giving mm -hmm. them the opportunity to learn. Well, and what a gateway for Kasten. I mean, I can easily say, I mean, you are the number, we haven't really talked about Kasten at all, but before we do, what are those pins in front of you? So this is a physical pin. These are physical pins that we gave away, away for different programs. So people who took labs, for example, rookie level, they would get this uh, pin. It's a rookie. Yes, okay. I'm going to hold this up yeah, just so they can do a yeah. little mm -hmm. close shot on it if you want. Yeah. <laughs> and this is pro for it's a it's a next level program. So we have a program actually for yeah, rookies to yeah. beginners, inter, um, intermediate, and then pro. So three three different levels, and this one is for helmsman. It's actually from previous. We, no, we had, helmsman yeah, is someone who has taken the no, first no. three labs, right? Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. But we actually had it already before. So yeah, this yeah, one yeah. is this yeah. One so is we in. built two new labs for this event. Uh, and it was very, uh, <laughs> very great, you know, to, to have it ready, absolutely new before this event. So we launched the whole website, the whole platform with new labs, additional labs, and uh, we <laughs> Brave also before an event, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we also had to. <laughs> <laughs> your expression just said it all. Exactly. Yeah, that was, you're yeah. a vacation in your future, we, yeah. Tom, I hope so. <laughs> We've had a couple of rough weeks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. This is part of it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but about those labs, so yeah. uh, in the classroom we had two, right? We had um, the, the, the rookie and the pro, and like I said, we wanted an audience for both. Most people stayed for both. And yes. there were people mm -hmm. at the That's venue awesome. one hour before we started because they did not want to miss it. Right. And what that shows to me is that even though KubeCon has been around for a long time and people have been coming back to this, there is a huge audience that considers themselves still very early on in their Kubernetes journey and wants to take, and, and is not too proud to go to a rookie class for Kubernetes. Uh, so for us that was like, okay, we're doing the right thing because yeah. with the website as well, more rookie users will keep, keep coming. And the big goal for us is just to accelerate their Kubernetes journey, right? There's a lot of platforms out there. Um, one platform I like as well is called the Tech World with Nana. She has a lot of instructional oh, videos. Oh, she's a wonderful YouTuber. Yes. She, she's, mm -hmm. yeah, her following is amazing. Um, but what we add to this is the hands-on yeah. part, right? And, and there's a lot of other resources as well where you have like uh, papers and books and everything. We try mm -hmm. to add those as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we feel that you can only learn it by doing it. And, and that yes. is what we offer. Totally, something well, like and, Kubernetes. And it sounds like you're demystifying it. You talked about one of the biggest things yeah. that everyone talks about with respect to Kubernetes adoption and some yeah. of the barriers is the complexity. So but it sounds to me like if the, we talked about the demand being there for the hands-on labs, the, the Cube campus, Io, but also the fact that people were waiting an hour early, mm -hmm. they're recognizing it's okay to raise them. I don't really understand this. Yeah. In fact, another thing that I heard speaking of, of the rookies is that about 60% of the attendees at this year's KubeCon are yeah, we heard new. That yeah, we heard that. Yeah. So maybe that's a lot of those rookies showed up saying, yeah. well, so these even guys are going to help us really demystify and start learning this at a pace that works yeah. for me as an individual. There's yeah, some crazy yeah. macro data to support this, just to echo this. So 85% of enterprise companies are about to start making this transition and leveraging Kubernetes. That means there's only 15% of a very healthy, substantial market that has adopted the technology at scale 
you're teaching that group of people. Let's talk about casting a little bit. Number one Kubernetes backup, 900% growth recently. How, how are you managing that? What's next for you guys? Yeah, so uh, growth last year was amazing. Yeah. Um, this year we're seeing very good numbers uh, as well. Um, I think part of the explanation is because people are going into production. Um, you cannot sell backup to a company that is not in production uh, with, their, uh, right. with their applications, right? So what we're starting to see is people are finally going into production with their Kubernetes applications and are realizing we have to back this up. The other trend that we're seeing is, um, I think still in LA last year, we were having a lot of stateless versus stateful conversations. Remember, containers yep. were created for stateless applications. That's no longer the case, absolutely. Um, but now the acceptance is there. We're not having those, oh, but we're stateless conversations because everybody runs at least a database with some user data or application data, whatever. So all Kubernetes applications need to be backed up. Absolutely. And we're the number one product for that. And you guys just had recently had a new release. Talk to yes. us a little bit about that before we wrap. Yeah. What's new in the platform? And, and also, what gives you, what gives Cast and MyBeam that competitive advantage in this new release? The competitive advantage is really simple. Our solution was built for Kubernetes with Kubernetes. Uh, there are other products Talk out there. Talk about dog fooding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? Uh, one of our successes at the show is also because we're using Kubernetes to build our application. People love to come to our booth to talk to our engineers who we always bring to the show because they have so much experience to share. That also helps us with KubeCampus, by the way, to, to, to build those labs, right? Uh, you need to have the, um, the experience. So the big competitive advantage is really that we're Kubernetes uh, native. Um, and then to talk about 5.5, I was going like, what was the other part of the question? <laughs> so yeah, we had 5.5 launched also uh, during the show, so it was really bu a busy week. Um, the big focus for 5.5 was uh, simplicity, to make it even easier to use our product. We really want people to uh, to find it easy. We, we were, using, were using new Helm charts and, and, and things like that. Uh, the second part of the launch was to do even more partner integrations. Um, because if you look at this space, this cloud native space, it's, um, you can also attest to that with, with Cube Campus. When you build an application, you need so many different tools, right? And we are right. trying to integrate with all of those tools in the most easy and most efficient way so that it becomes easy for our customers uh, to use our technology uh, in their Kubernetes stack. I love it. Tom, Victoria, one final question for you before we wrap up. You mentioned that you have a fantastic team. I can tell just from the energy you two have, that's <laughs> probably the truth. You also mentioned that you bring the party everywhere you go. Where are we all going after this? Where's the party tonight? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> let's first go to a ball game tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the party's on the court, I love it, go Pistons. <laughs> and, and then we'll end up somewhere downtown in a, in a good club, I guess. Yeah. yeah, well we'll see how the showdown with the Hawks goes. I hope you guys make it to the game. Tom, Victoria, thank you so much for being here. We're excited about what you're doing. Lisa, always a joy sharing the stage with you, Likewise. my love. And to all of you who are watching, thank you so much for tuning into theCUBE. We are wrapping up here with one segment left in Detroit, Michigan. My name's Savannah Peterson, thanks for being here.